Now at 5.30 on WKYT This Morning, we have learned overnight a Kentucky state trooper from Lawrenceburg has been killed in a crash in western Kentucky. That trooper, as we said, originally from Anderson County, will have the details ahead. Severe storms are bringing some chaos to much of the northeast. A look at the damage up there. And nearly 100 new laws are set to go into effect across the Commonwealth today. We'll have a look at what has changed. Coming up this morning in a live report. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning, and it is so nice to have you with us here on WKYT, Wednesday morning, June 24th. We're at a hump day. We'll get through this week. I'm Bill Bryant. Rebecca's off today, and meteorologist Micah Harris is tracking weather for us as we look for a pretty good day ahead. It is going to be really nice. I mean, it is a totally different feel once you step out the door this morning than as opposed to yesterday. These two days are just going to be different uh, in the feel and toward the afternoon and the look, too, because we just don't have a real rain chance in the forecast. Temperatures are in the 60s for the most part, a couple of 70s down south, but those will turn into 60s before the sun does rise. Planning out your hump day, we head toward the afternoon. There we are in the mid 80s, and you can see there's really no chance of rain whatsoever. Heading off into the evening, it'll be a beautiful evening at 78 degrees. Humidity's down. And that's key. But enjoy it while it lasts, because you know it doesn't last long. Here comes that heat, humidity, and also those thunderstorms to deal with in the next couple of days. And I'll show you that what you can expect out of it coming up. Okay, we'll see you in just a bit. And new this morning on WKYT, we have learned that a Kentucky State Police trooper has been killed in a crash in western Kentucky. State police say 23 year old Eric Chrisman was killed just before 6 o'clock last evening on US 62 in Marshall County. He was driving his cruiser westbound, responding to a reckless driving complaint when he crossed into the opposite lane. Troopers say a tractor trailer hit his cruiser. Chrisman, who was originally from Lawrenceburg, was pronounced dead at the scene. Police say the tractor trailer driver was treated at a nearby hospital and has been released. A year after his death, two men have been charged with the murder of a Marine in Lexington. Jonathan Price and Megan Price were celebrating at a local bar in the Woodhill Drive area when both were shot. Megan survived, but Jonathan died at the hospital. Two men already in jail, 23-year-old Quincinio Canada and 31-year-old Dewan Muslim, are now charged with murder, robbery, and assault. They were already facing charges in several other felonies. Police say the two were behind a series of robberies in the city last summer. New this morning, a crash involving a tractor trailer caused a major traffic backup in Rowan County. Dispatchers tell us the westbound lanes of Interstate 64 and about mile point 136 are still blocked off. They say a tractor trailer jackknifed and ran into a guardrail. As you can see, part of the trailer is hanging off of the highway. Troopers tell us no one was injured in this. The highway has opened back up there around 5 o'clock this morning. Morning, but again, that could be a slow point there in Rowan County this morning. Starting today, nearly 100 new laws are set to go into effect across the Commonwealth. So uh, some of those laws include changes to booster seat requirements and drunk driving. WKYT's Mark Barber is at our live desk with a look at those laws and how they'll be enforced. Mark, good morning. Good morning, Bill. One of the most notable new laws, House Bill 315, will require a lot more children to ride in booster seats. The law goes into effect today and it adds an extra year or seven inches to the previous booster seat requirements. Now children will have to ride in a booster seat until they are 57 inches tall or eight years old. State highway officials say the change is needed because seat belts don't fit children shorter than 57, 57 inches rather, and that can lead to serious injuries in a crash. If you break the law, state police tell us you can be slapped with a $30 fine. However, violators might may buy a booster seat instead of paying that fine. Now, that's just one of 98 new laws going into effect today. Another noteworthy law, Senate Bill 133, will expand the use of ignition interlocks for people caught driving drunk. That means that anyone convicted of DUI must blow into the ignition device in order to start their car. If there is a considerable amount of alcohol in your system, the car won't start. From the Live Desk, Mark Barber, WKYT. 
All right, Mark, thank you very much. It's a big win for President Obama's trade agenda. The Senate has advanced a measure allowing fast track approval of large international trade bills. The Senate voted 60 to 37 on President Obama's trade agenda. 13 of 14 pro trade Senate Democrats were concerned that a related workers' assistance package might not pass both chambers. Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says it will be a win for the Commonwealth. It's proving that our friends can rally with us in support of 1.4 million additional jobs in our country, including over 18,000 in Kentucky alone. As one study estimates, new trade agreements with Europe and the Pacific could well support. Fast track authority would allow the White House to secure a major trade deal with 11 other countries. A final vote could be coming as soon as later today. Well, the storm system that spawned tornadoes in the Midwest on Monday brought strong thunderstorms and damage to parts of the Northeast yesterday. As CBS News correspondent Wendy Gillette reports from New York. This video from Cherry Hill, New Jersey, shows the force of the fast moving storm system that passed over the Philadelphia area during the evening rush hour, uprooting trees and knocking out power to hundreds of thousands. It came with a real, like within 15 minutes and was here and gone. Passengers on an Amtrak train stood in the aisles waiting after the weather shut down service between Washington and Philadelphia. The weather caused car accidents in South Jersey and in Montgomery County, Maryland, where one man was killed. Fairly large trees were down in this area. The car appears to have skidded off, hit a pole, uh, broke the pole. Unfortunately, some live wires, uh, hot wires, came down on top of the vehicle. In another part of the county, a large tree crushed an SUV, but no one was hurt. We're safe and we're okay, so that's the important one. Heavy rain caused roads to flood in Leesburg, Virginia. A tornado watch was issued for parts of New England. None were spotted, but the high winds still brought down plenty of trees in a number of areas, including here in New Haven County, Connecticut. Wendy Gillette for CBS News. Amtrak service was restored last night, but there are still some problems on the local train lines in the Philadelphia area this morning because of those storms. Well, parents and other Lexington community members are getting a first look at a potential Fayette County Schools superintendent. Because so many people wanted to attend the public reception for Emmanuel Calk, it had to be moved over to Dunbar High School. Calk is currently the superintendent of schools in Portland, Maine. He spent the day touring Fayette County Schools, says he likes what he sees. So it's great to see students engage in learning, especially during the summer, um, to re prevent that summer slide. Two, uh, we saw some great teachers, you know, and instruction. And then the third part that's also important as well is that it takes the entire community to ensure the success of our public schools. What I've been able to see, especially at um, William Wells Brown Elementary School, community school, great community support. Eight different focus groups, including students, school employees, and members of the community, will be interviewing Calk. And a public forum will be held at Central Office later today. A second finalist, Terry Breeden, will be in Lexington tomorrow and Friday. Sexual harassment lawsuits involving a couple of Kentucky lawmakers have been settled. But the attorneys on both sides are not giving any details at the moment. Two female state workers filed a lawsuit claiming that former state representative John Arnold touched them inappropriately. And the Legislative Research Commission didn't do enough to protect them. A third female state worker sued Representative Will Corsi, saying that he retaliated against her after she complained about his inappropriate behavior. As politicians across the country are calling for the removal of reminders of the Confederacy, some politicians here in the Commonwealth are calling for the removal of a certain statue from the Capitol Rotunda. A statue of Confederate President Jefferson Davis, who was born in Kentucky, has stood for decades in the Rotunda. Now Governor Steve Beshear has decided to review that statue's future, along with the future of some others there in the Rotunda. Senator Mitch McConnell, Matt Bevan, who is the Republican nominee for governor, and Senate President Robert Stivers, also a Republican, say the statue should be removed. One historian says no matter what, Jefferson Davis should be remembered for his place in history. You have to remember a figure, no matter what type of figure in history, whether you're loved or hated, they all have affected American history and world history. We have to remember what they did. We have to remember what they stood for, but we have to put it in the context of the times.
Senator McConnell has suggested moving the statue to the State History Museum, which is also uh, in the state capital city. Well, Lexington City leaders are hoping that some of the city's flowers and landscaping will be receiving national attention. The city hosted representatives from the America in Bloom Community Awards Program. Judges toured downtown Lexington as well as the Horse Park, Keeneland, and other sites around town. The awards will be handed out this fall. Lexington won the award for Best Commercial Streetscape last year. So we will see how that all goes. Hey, it's uh, 540 and time to check live drive traffic this morning and see what's going on out there. So far, it's a clear commute if you're headed into Lexington or across town today. Not seeing any issues or real delays out on the roadways right now. Just watch for some of those existing projects going on. Construction, as you know, in the downtown area as well as uh, over on the UK campus with uh, the Alumni Drive being uh, shut off there between Tates Creek Road and Nicholasville Road. And that's going to be the case throughout the summer. Uh, they're hoping to get that uh, ready to go by the time school starts back. Still a lot more to come on WKYT here on your Wednesday morning. Goats will eat just about anything, even plants that are dangerous to humans. We'll show you how goats are getting rid of some pesky plants in Arkansas. That report, it's ahead in about five minutes. Now we have a really good looking day outside. Once that sun rises, you're going to be seeing those temperatures right there in the mid 80s and humidity way down. Have a good looking forecast coming to you next.